Hey everybody, this is Chris Collins and Larry Wingett coming from our top annual Top Dog event. We're so lucky to have Larry here today speaking. Larry and I are um, both big fans of tequila and bulldogs, and this is Tequila the Bulldog. Um, trying very hard not to cooperate. What's up, dude? You can tell he doesn't miss too many meals, right? <laughs> He's great. I don't like it. So um, I think, Larry, a couple things that, that we have in common, and I, um, I'm kind of curious, is you're kind of a straightforward guy. And you yeah, kind of I'm kind of known for that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell it like it is yeah. most of the time. Have you ever been had an experience where – you um, you told somebody like it is in business or, or in life and you kind of regretted it later? Or? Well, first of all, I'm not big on regrets. Uh, if it's done, it's done. Just don't go do it again. But in terms of passing out advice, I, um, I don't walk up and tap people on the shoulder and say, hey, let me tell you, I think you're an idiot. <laughs> I kind of wait until they ask me what I think. And if they're asking me what I think, uh, it's because they want to hear what I have to say. So they should be prepared for it. And if they're not, well, to hell with them. I mean, they ask. So I tell people wh exactly what they want to know. It, yeah, they get their feelings hurt, but I'm not sorry. They might be sorry they asked, but I'm not sorry I told them the truth. So you're, you're actually probably in life a little more conservative as you're not throwing it out there. But if somebody's asking, you'll give it. But otherwise, you hold it in and you're just screaming inside that... Uh, no, I don't do a lot of screaming on the inside. I, uh, I don't have any problem expressing myself, but when it comes to opinions about people and what they're doing, uh, I wait till they ask. Have you ever um, held back or uh, lied isn't really the, the way to say it, but not really told somebody the full truth just because you thought they couldn't handle it? No. No? No. One, I don't lie. And, and two, if they ask, I'll tell them. Uh, sometimes I will say, how deep do you want me to go? I mean, how uh, bold do you want me to be? And everybody always says, no, I want it all. Give it to me, Larry, until I give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the truth hurts. That's kind of how you know it's the truth. Uh, if somebody walks up and says something real nice to you, they're probably lying to you. So, uh, again, I, I don't interrupt people with my opinions of them. If I'm on the news asking my opinion about things, um, you know, that's, that's a different deal. I'll go ahead and spout off. But on a one-to-one -one basis or with individuals, I'd let them ask for it. Yeah, I've, I've <clears throat> had it where I've made, where made them cry before, and it feels a little bad. Because they ask. Why? And then they, Why? they cry. Why? Even when men cry, it drives me crazy. Oh, I have that happen all the time. Listen, if I don't make people cry, I'm probably not doing my job. See, you're, you're better at that than me. I get a... I get, I'm older I get a, and I'm meaner, and I just don't give a damn anymore. So, um, Speaking of that, how have you changed over the, over the years um, with your thoughts on people, their performance, them, um, you know, lacking common sense? I'm a lot more black and white than I used to be. I used to try to find the gray areas uh, so it would benefit people, you know, and and maybe help them rationalize or justify behavior or actions or thoughts or whatever. And um, uh, over the years, I've just gotten real black and white. I mean, I really think it's right or it's wrong. Either in the way or on the way, hello or goodbye. That's the way it is. And uh, it's a much simpler world that I live in these days. Uh, and I think everybody should simplify their lives down to, uh, lives down to the point they just say, I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, it's not that I should be doing a little bit of it or, uh, you know, or I'll just, uh, you know, it, it's like being a little pregnant. You can't. It's right or it's wrong. You can't do any of that stuff. So simplify your life and figure out what moves you closer to where you want to be or moves you farther away from where you want to be. And understand that everything does. I, I mean, once you know what you want your life to look like, your business to look like, understand there's no gray area. Nothing is neutral. Everything moves you closer to your goals or it moves you farther away from your goals. Now that sort of black and white living and thinking will help people much quicker than trying to live in that gray area in the middle. So it's easier. Yeah, and I always say success is attracted to clarity and I think you're a perfect example of that. You know exactly who you are, what your point of view is, yep. and there's, there's not a lot of... Um, you know, doubting it or inconsistencies, because when that yeah. starts to happen, you get lost. 
If you called me at three in the morning and asked what my opinion was on anything, I wouldn't have to think about it. Yeah. I mean, I could just start saying it. And people who have to, see, I don't understand that whole sit and ponder thing. It's like you go to the restaurant with some idiot and they go, what would you like? Could you tell me what's good? I, I, I don't want <laughs> a waiter telling me what he thinks is good. Why do you have to ask those kind of stupid questions? You know, if I ask you how you feel about anything, you should know. And people who don't know, don't have that kind of clarity, uh, they're never really going to be truly successful, in my opinion. I know what the right thing for me to do is. I never have to question it. I never doubt it. I just take action. And, uh, but part of that is, is uh, I live to make me happy. And way too many people live to make others happy. I've learned that I make other, happy, other people happy. I serve them best by being the best version of myself that I can be. Because if I'm compromising who I am just to make you happy, it's not going to work. Right. And, and that we have way too many people in society who are living for the approval of others. I mean, that, that's the, the biggest problem with social media today. They're living for other people's approval. They'll, they'll decide what they want to eat in the morning and take a picture of it just so they can get uh, 100 likes on Facebook. Crap drives me nuts. Yeah, it is nuts. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you radiate when you're as um, sure about it as you are. You radiate that, and it, it benefits everybody because it's contagious in a, in a lot of ways. A guy posted on my, I like social media, but a guy posted on my page last night. He said, I thought I saw you tonight in Houston at Perry's Restaurant until I realized he didn't have boots or confidence. <laughs> And I said, okay, those would be the two qualifiers right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. Um, who do you, uh, for uh, two questions, one is what books, besides your books, which are amazing, and I, I would love to tell you that um, Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life hit me right at the time that I needed. Mm -hmm. I went through a business deal that blew up. I was feeling sorry for myself. And um, reading that book not only just got me back to where I was, was supposed to be, some of the exercises in there and the... Um, you know, the things that you, you talk about, you do every day and read and stuff really helped me. Um, but what books besides um, yours do you like? Like, what's your top three books that you like? I like um, The War of Art. Have you read The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield? I, let me tell you what I like best about that book is because everybody right now, and it's become real popular to talk about how uh, you have to have passion for what you do and you have to love what you do. Uh, which I think is a load of crap. Uh, and like he four-hour work week. I don't know oh anybody God. successful that's working four hours. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I really attack those those basic ideas to begin with. But Pressfield talks about how amateurs love what they do, and professionals love what they do enough to do whatever it takes to be amazing at it. And so I always ask people, "Are you an amateur or a professional?" Based on that. And, and when people just say, I love what I do and I'm passionate about it and so forth, I'm just betting they're probably not very good at it. So that's why I like Pressfield's book, The, the War of Art. Um, I, I'm also a big reader of fiction, and I think you can learn a lot from great fiction. I, I love great writing. I've read uh, 4,500 books in the last 30 years, so I read a lot. You have a big collection. Yeah. And um, so I think the best fiction book that I've ever read is... John Irving's A Prayer for Owen Meany. I love that book. Uh, a great book once you get, start having some success in life and you kind of lose your perspective is by Richard Bode. It's called First You Have to Row a Little Boat. Have you ever read that? No. It's just about calming down. He wrote another one called Beach Combing at Miramar. And it's about at some point in your life, it's not about uh, just getting more stuff and everything. You better learn to sit back on the beach, sort of beach of life. and chill a little bit and appreciate and relax and watch things come and go and and that book was a great reminder of me on how to do those things and and to help me keep my life in perspective there's a lot of good stuff out there though how did you do the cover for um, grow a pair <clears throat> was that your idea or did somebody else come up with that idea when I first wrote the book grow a pair I always pictured it with watermelons me holding a big set of watermelons and when I sold it to the publisher uh, there's a whole story behind that selling grow a pair to the publisher. I mean, everybody was all for it. Everybody loved it, thought it was a great idea. Uh, and then they said, we got to change the title. And I said, oh, yeah, and it already, we shot the cover. We were ready to go to press. 
And the sales force gave them a pushback and said, we can't sell a book called Grow a Pair. And uh, they called they me and said, <coughs> yeah, they'd, I've right. done five bestsellers with yeah. these guys. And, um, and they said, we've got to change the title. And I said, how much of a pair would I have if I caved on the title? And I said, and by the way, if you want to, I'll just send your advance back to you. And I'll have this book sold again to another publisher by the end of the day, except it'll have a new first chapter featuring you. <laughs> so, but when I, when I sold in the book, Grow a Pair, I said, it's got to have watermelons. They have a, a photographer. She shot all the covers of my books. She's really famous on doing uh, celebrity photos and, and book covers for this publisher. And they sent her out there and they told her, whatever you do, do not use watermelons. And if Larry <laughs> shows up with watermelons, don't put them in the picture. Don't do it. We're not doing watermelons on the cover. It sends the wrong message. And uh, she gets there, and I show up at the studio. We meet in <clears throat> Phoenix, where she flew in, and she's got an assistant. And so sh we shoot the cover, and at the end, she says, all right, we shot it their way. Let's shoot it the right way. <laughs> and she brought out the watermelons. And I, she said, you were right all along. They're wrong, and I'm going to prove it to them. I shot their cover. Now let's shoot your cover. And we shot my cover, and, you know, they went with the watermelon picture. Oh, it's, it's iconic. I mean, that's such a great picture. What were the other pictures that you had to endure before you got to that? <clears throat> oh, there, I couldn't have a pair of anything. Oh, it was just... Yeah, you. it was just pictures of men. No, no, that makes the whole thing. I know. And then, of course, I had a contest, and I had people from all over the world taking pictures of themselves with watermelons and yeah. sending them in to me. It was a great no, it's contest. it's so powerful. Yeah, it's great. That's, that's funny. Who do you, in your, um, in your personal life, who do you mastermind with <clears throat> and um, kind of have that inner circle with? Mastermind kind of sounds like a, a formal uh, way to do it, and I don't really do that. I've got a handful of buddies that do what I do for a living, uh, that I trust and I enjoy and I would listen to. They know who I am. They know my values. I think that's really important. That if you're going to be with somebody in a mastermind kind of situation, that they know who you are, they understand your values, they know your background, they know what's important to you. And uh, it, it's guys, uh, I write a blog with them, it's called The Five Friends. It's guys uh, who operate at my level, Joe Calloway, Mark Sanborn, Scott McCain, Randy Pennington. And um, anybody can follow me and find the blog where we uh, weigh in every other week on some topic of the day or some business issue or our favorite drink or <laughs> best so there restaurant. guys that you'd smoke a cigar with and have a drink. Oh, absolutely. Talk, talk, lie and tell the truth to each other. Lie and That's tell the fun. truth. The nice thing is when you've been friends for 25 years, you don't get by with a lot of lies. Somebody's yeah. always there to go, come on. <laughs> <laughs> how many Bulldogs have you owned? I know you have Ralph now, Ralph's 10, but how many Bulldogs have you owned? Uh, my, I started with Pit Bulls many, many years ago. And, you know, I'm known as the Pit Bull of personal development. It's a registered trademark. But... Then I had Elvis. She was my first English bulldog. She Elvis, Elvis was a girl. Yeah, I had Elvis, and I had Butter was a Frenchie, and then uh, Ralph, who's my English right now, and I. Uh, Ralph's my best buddy, and then I have Gus, who's a Frenchie right now. So I sort of mix the French and the English. Does Ralph sleep in bed with you? No, he's. Uh, we have a tall bed, and I, Ralph. He's not making it up there. No, he, he might fall off or something. <laughs> And besides that, Ralph snores like a train. Yeah. You know how they are. Oh, yeah. The little one right there, Olivia, is worse than the boys. I mean, she sounds like a, you know, like my grandpa did. <laughs> she he sleeps terrible. in the room with me. He's got his own bed right at the foot of the bed. So, I, I mean, I can always reach down and scratch his head or whatever I want. But I made the mistake earlier on in, in life of letting my bulldog sleep on the bed, and now... I don't because it ruins you have four. ruins your love life. It's they're always, you know, elbowing you and waking you up and pushing you off the bed. Yeah, they're hard to sleep with. They're yeah, rough they sleepers. are. And, and Frenchies have a tendency to be burrowers. So they don't just lay on top of covers. They get up by your head and then they go under. Yeah. And they're digging around. It's and hard stuff. to get a good night's sleep when all that's going on. Yeah. But that's I love true. them just like um, you do. Well, I really appreciate you doing this event oh, this for fun. me. I appreciate it. And um, we had a cigar last night and drinks and had a lot of fun. And this group will be fun. It should be good. Thank you very much, Larry. I enjoyed it, bud.